Ray, it's good to see you back in Mississippi again. Well, thank you for having me back, George, and I really appreciate the, the nice warm weather you have for me as well. We saved it up just for you. You know, it's a shame you couldn't be here at Field Day. We had a lot of fun this year, but I understand you did too. Yes, sir. Did have a lot of fun. Not quite as nice as what you guys did with the Visqueen and duct tape. Yep, yep. That's, um, well, that, that's, you'll just have to go watch that one, episode 80 of Amateur Logic. Uh, what are we going to talk about here today? Well, there's been a lot of feedback from the Ham Nation crowd that they would like to see more about firmware updates. Mm -hmm. And since you did one in episode 142, I thought we would just go in a little bit farther on that one. Okay. One of the easiest things to do is to see if you've got a firmware update. Yeah, how do we do that? Uh, the best way, since we're going to start right here from Amateur Logic's site, is www.icomamerica.com and select Amateur, one of the very first tabs here. Most of the firmware updates are going to be on the HF radios and since we're going to experiment with yours, George, let's click to the 7700. On pretty much all of our HF pages, we've got a button that you can select here, download the latest firmware updates. And, and let me say that if you've got an ICOM HF radio, you want to do this you want to go look and see if there's a firmware update for yours because, boy, it really added a lot of nice features to mine this last time around. And that's one of the things with the ICOM firmware. Sometimes we'll have a bug fix when a radio first comes out, but some of the older radios like the 7700 and 7800, the latest firmware updates basically gave you a brand new radio. Wow. So I see there's been numerous updates on both of those radios as well as the 7600 down there too. Yes, sir, and even after they went out of production, we're still supporting firmware updates for the 7800 as well as the 7700. Now, the link that this takes you to is on the ICOM uh, global page. Okay, in Japan. For, in Japan, it's got both firmware as well as software downloads. So, as you can see, 7600, 7410, 9100, 7100. This is where you get your magic USB drivers. Uh, the one nice thing about the ICOM USB ports is it sets up two virtual ports. One is for rig control and the other one's for audio. Yeah. So before you plug in your radio to your computer, you want to go and download that, that driver. Make sure you have it installed and then plug it in because if you allow the, your OS provider to identify what they think are the right drivers for you, it becomes a little bit more of a process to remove what they thought and really put in what we're using. Yeah. So the instructions are install the ICOM drivers first, then plug your radio in. Yes, sir. Along with the drivers, some of the software that's available for programming, like the 51, the portables, and there's actually been firmware updates for the portables as well. That's true. So, I mean, it's not just for the HF radios. But back to your 7700, and they're in chronological order on the oldest to the newest. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and select the page for this specific one. It'll give you some of the main features, but there's also going to be other features that will not be published, that there might be some DSP enhancements and some changes that we've done. And you'll just, after using it, you'll notice some differences. Hmm. So it's not just what's listed there then. There could be some uh, what do they call them, Easter eggs? Yes, sir. So one of the first things that you want to do, and you've shown in your video that we'll be playing a little bit later going through the process, is the information for the firmware. That's always good to download and review before you go through the process. As you can see, this is firmware information version 2.1 for your 7700. Mm -hmm. There will be a document similar to this for each of the firmware updates for any of the ICOM radios. It gives you a basic description of what's been added or what's been changed in the radio itself. Now, I noticed there was something on here that was added that really nobody brought much attention to, but you and I were just talking about it. Some of the additions in here were features for like the CI5 commands for the antennas, your send relay type, new option for save form items, but one of the biggest changes, and this is something that the software developers have been asking for for quite some time, is some of the status information from your second VFO. 
And of course, this will be different for, for different model radios, I guess. Yes, the latest updates for pretty much like the 7600, the 7800, 7700, I think the 7410 and 9100 had this as well. Okay. So all these radios have been upgraded recently? Pretty much. Huh. There's been a rash of firmware updates in the last, I would say, the last five months. Oh, wow. So it's worth it if you've got an ICOM HF rig and maybe some of the portables to, to go look and see what's out there. Oh, definitely. I mean, some of the enhancements have been pretty, pretty significant. I mean, mm -hmm. you identified in your video the addition of the, the waterfall display. Mm -hmm. that, that was a really nice one. And uh, actually, in the one that you did also gave the remote base uh, server Oh, internally really? on your 7700. Yeah. So you no longer needed two computers to do it. You just s configured your 7700 to your router mm -hmm. and then you were good to go. And I've used that a number of times and that right there, if I didn't get anything else out of the firmware update, that would have made it worth it to me. But, but it, I got a lot of other stuff too. Yeah, but it also caused a couple of projects for you. Your well, it did. antenna switch, your remote mm -hmm. antenna switch. And as people start building more remote base functionality you get IP addressable power switches mm -hmm. and and rotor controls amplifier controls so I mean it can you can completely automate your shack now oh yeah yeah so what do we do uh, we've we've looked at the info here to see you know what's new on this particular firmware how would we go about getting the firmware well we'll go ahead and close this tab then we'll scroll down Go ahead and agree to the the download service. Oh, and then just save it. And that will save it to your downloads folder. Yes. Or you can do a save as and save it to your desktop or wherever you want. Wherever put it. you want to place it. So we go here to view the downloads. So then we will go ahead and open it. And you'll see that it's a zip file. And we can easily just click, depending on your version of software that you're using, and we will extract it. Extract it. And there's your USB drive being plugged in. Yes, sir. Open a folder to view. And this is the one that I had for the 7600. Okay, so it created the 7600 folder on there when you formatted it in the rig. Yes, sir. Since this video is going to encompass a lot of the different models we're showing here, what I did for the 7600, I copied the folder for the 7600 right under my settings. So that's the file with, that you have downloaded from ICOM. Yes. All right, and now I guess we can go to my rig and see how you would go about it, updating it. Yes, sir. Now, one thing that, that you did not cover in the video, and it, it scares a lot of people, is the big yellow screen. Yeah, that was pretty scary, I have to admit. And I think, did you just take the chance that you wouldn't lose power, or, or are you running, or did you do your firmware update while using a UPS on your radio? Man, I ran risky, but I, I should have plugged it into my UPS just to be on the safe side. Pretty much any UPS that you use on your computer system mm -hmm. will work just fine because you're only pulling two amps when you're doing the firmware update. The biggest thing is make sure you got, I think it takes less than 15 minutes to do an update. Yeah. If it's a major one, uh, the 7600 that we just saw was less than five minutes. Yeah. And we, we really did it risky at Dayton. The, the radios that we had in our booth had not been updated. Oh. <laughs> and during setup, I'm doing the update, and it had just finished, and then one of the guys unplugs the entire case, and it goes down. And I'm like, oh, dude, really? You had to do that now? Oh, why? <laughs> so, luckily it was in the reboot screen, so all we did is we plugged it back up, everything came back up, little nervous moment while the radio was rebooting, and then the, the screen came back up and we're like, whoo! So that's one important thing, just wait, let it do its thing, don't turn the radio off or yeah, plug it or anything. Don't panic. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well. Let's take a look at how I did it on mine. Okay. In this age of digital technology, many radios have a firmware operating system that tells the radio how to behave. 
ICOM recently released a firmware upgrade for the IC7700, and I've been wanting to put it on mine, so that's what we're going to do today. The first thing we need to do is download the firmware. Here's the link at the ICOM Japan website. If that's too small to read, try this link right here. All the files are there for the firmware upgrade, as well as a couple of documents about the firmware. Once you've downloaded everything, there's a couple of notes that you need to read. If that's too small to read, try this. It's very important you read the manual so that you don't brick your radio. Now that I've downloaded the firmware, I'll put a USB memory stick into the IC7700, and I need to back up my memory settings. So I'll hit exit to get out of the scope. I'll press set. I'll press USB. And if this card has not already been formatted, I'll need to press format. Now I'll press save. And then I'll press the other save button. And it'll prompt me to ask if I'm sure. And I'll click OK. And now we can see it's backing up the memory settings. Once that's complete, I'll click load. And I'll look in the settings folder to be sure that settings were actually saved. Now I need to copy the firmware to the USB drive, so I'll pull it out of the 7700 and hook it to my computer. Now here's a zip file containing the firmware that I downloaded. I'll unzip that and copy the file back to the folder here, and we find a DAT file. I'm going to copy that now, and we'll paste it into the IC7700 folder on the USB memory stick. Now we'll put the thumb drive back into the IC7700, and it's indicating USB there, so we know it sees it. We need to press the exit button to get back out to the main screen here, and we'll hold down the firm up button for one second. A message appears, and we need to read that and pay careful attention. We'll scroll down to read the complete message, and then at the bottom it asks me, do I agree? I'll click OK, yes. And now we can see my firmware shown here. So we'll press the Firm Up button again. And it asks me if I want to start the update. I'll click OK. And now it's underway. We don't do anything with the rig, especially don't turn off the power. Once the file is loaded, it presents another dialog box. It says, please wait until this dialog disappears and then reboot the 7700. That takes a little while, but eventually I get another screen that says the update is complete, and now I should power off the rig, power it back on, and then don't do anything until the normal operation screen appears. Now, these things have taken a little longer than you're seeing on the video here. I've edited it down so that we can get right to the point. Now, the rig is rebooting now, and it looks like we're back. Now, the first thing I'm going to want to do is put my memory settings back in. So I press Set, USB, Load, and there's my memory settings right there. I press Load again. Am I sure? Yes, I'm sure. I'll press OK for the voice memory too. Yep, OK. And now reboot the 7700 once more. And now we're right back where we were. I've got the same frequency. Hey, I've got a waterfall too. How cool is that? If I press the audio button, I've got an audio scope display now. This really looks nice, but the thing I'm interested in is the remote control using the LAN connector on the rear. There's a number of other features in here as well. I don't even know them all yet, but I'll have to stumble through and see what I can find. So far, I'm really impressed, and I didn't brick my radio. So, tip, follow the instructions carefully when you're going to do a firmware upgrade. George, if there's any questions or concerns about before you do it or anything like that, instead of sending you an email, click our support button, and this segment right here, our technical support guys will be glad to help anybody. So we can just call them on the phone. Call them on the phone. Or you can send them an email, amateur at icomamerica.com, and that will get to the guys, and you'll get an acknowledgement back and a case number to look at, mm -hmm. and you can just go from there. Cool. All right, thanks for showing us that. That's uh, 
Uh, of course, I had already done it on my rig, but I know there's a lot of people out there wanting to do it, uh, particularly on the 7600 right now. Yeah, 7600, and, and still there's guys that are on the, that have the 7800 that are just really afraid to, mm -hmm. to do it, and it's that old scenario, you go to the grandparents' house, if they had a VCR, it'd be flashing 12 o'clock. Yep. It's just that whole fear to take that one step, and it's not that difficult. No, it, it was really pretty simple. All right, well, 73. Thank you. 73, everybody.